Hello and welcome to the 18th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to initiate a wild battle using a script and learn how to incorporate music and sounds into our events. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I initiate a wild Pokemon battle? And how do I properly utilize different sound commands? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will initiate a wild battle dependent upon the player's gender. If you scroll through the overworld sprites in advanced map, eventually you'll find Pokemon sprites instead of normal human or object sprites. These sprites are here because of various insignificant events in the game, such as the daycare's outside field. When we trigger a wild battle, there are two ways that are most frequently used. The first is to use one of these overworld sprites as a person event, then assign a wild battle script to the sprite. This feels very natural in game since we can just walk up to the Pokemon and battle it. The second way is to use a script event in a patch of tall grass. When the player steps on it, a wild battle will be immediately triggered. This makes it seem like an actual random wild battle. We're going to be using the second method. I'll be assigning the script to the script event selected on screen. We start by locking the player. There are two things we can do at this point. We can either immediately begin the wild battle, making it seem like a random tall grass battle, or we can play the cry of the Pokemon that the player is about to run into, then start the battle. This way makes for a more formal battle, so let's roll with it. To play a particular cry, type cry, then the hex value of the Pokemon species, then 0x0. I'll be using the species value of 0x7, so Squirtle's cry will be played. After that, type wait cry. This will wait for the cry to finish before moving on with the script. Next, type wild battle. This command has three parameters. The first is the Pokemon to appear, the second is its level, and the third is its held item, if any. This command will take care of the entire battle sequence. Finally, we will wrap up the script with release, then end. Before I step on the event in game, I'm going to turn up the game's sound so you can hear the cry. Before the Squirtle showed up, its cry was played. The script waited for it to finish, then triggered a wild battle. Revisiting the person event idea, if we decide to use a Pokemon Overworld sprite instead of a script event, it's usually a good idea to hide the sprite after defeating the Pokemon. You can do this by assigning a flag to the person event, then setting the flag just after the wild battle command. Let's move on to utilizing music in our events. Changing the music or silencing it altogether can make an event much more dramatic or give it a significant vibe. There is an option to change the map's default music and advanced map under the header tab. Clicking on the drop-down arrow shows us every song available for use along with their respective hex values. We can reference this list of hex values while writing scripts in XSE to deal with the music. We're going to write a script in which an NPC asks us what song we would like to hear. The NPC will give us a choice of either listening to Sky Pillars music or switching back to the current map's default music. Let's continue this script by writing the at play sky pillar pointer section. Type fade song 0x0196. This command will fade the currently playing song into the song represented by the hex value given. The value 0x0196 represents sky pillar as noted in advance map. If you're hacking fire red, the sky pillar music doesn't exist and you'll have to decide on another song to use. Now let's write the at play default pointer section. This section shouldn't directly target Little Root Town's hex value since we wouldn't want the music to be off if we moved the NPC somewhere else like Route 101. To change the music from one song to the map's default song, type Fade Default. This command has no parameters. I've inserted everything into the game. I'll let you listen to the game's sound so you can verify that the script is working as intended. Everything seems to be working. 
At the end of the event, I showed that if you tried to fade a song into the exact same song, nothing will happen. If you do for some reason want to start the song over from the beginning, you can use the play song command instead of fade song. Play song takes two parameters. The first is the hex value of the song to play, and the second must be set to 0x0. This command doesn't come with any fading effects. The next topic I want to cover is fanfares. Fanfares are short jingles that play whenever an event occurs that warrant some sound to be played in order to add to its immersiveness. Basically, they add extra music to our events. To introduce fanfares, we're going to be writing a PokeCenter script. An NPC will ask us if we want our Pokémon healed. If we say yes, the script will jump to the at heal pointer. If you recall, when the player's party is healed in a Poke Center, a short jingle is played while the Pokeballs glow in the healing machine next to Nurse Joy. That jingle is actually a fanfare, and we need to play it here. Type fanfare 0x100. This will begin playing that fanfare specified by the hex value given. After the fanfare command, type special 0x0, then wait fanfare. Special 0x0 will heal the player's party of Pokémon, and Wait Fanfare will simply halt script execution until the fanfare is finished playing. Next, we'll wrap it up and end the script. I'll turn up the game's sound once again so you can verify that the fanfare works as intended. The NPC healed my Bulbasaur and correctly played the fanfare. In addition to fanfares, there are other sounds that we can play. These noises can be triggered with the sound command. This command has one parameter, that being the hex value of the sound to play. Sounds are a little bit different than fanfares in that they aren't multiple seconds long jingles. They're actually just a sort of snap of the finger sound effect, like an egg cracking, a bell chiming, or a door opening. I haven't used these much myself, but I did manage to find a list of every sound you can use in the sound command. I tested some of them out in each version of the Gen 3 games, and it seems like they are the exact same throughout. Which is nice, since Ruby and Emerald hackers usually get the short stick on things like this. I'll post the list in the description of this video. One last thing I want to mention is how to manually search the ROM for sounds and music. There are a few tools out there that will let you look through every sound in the game, most notably Sappy. Sappy is notorious for not working properly or not even running on some computers, but I'm going to quickly show it off here anyway since it's not an absolute essential to being able to play music in game. Opening a ROM in Sappy will allow us to click the left and right arrows at the top of the window to listen to different sounds or tracks within the ROM. Full music tracks begin somewhere around the 300th sound, but that differs depending on which game you're hacking. Clicking the play button will play whatever sound is currently selected. Clicking the stop button will stop whatever sound is currently selected. If you find a song or sound that you want to use in a script, you can convert its song value to hex, then use the fade song, fanfare, or sound command to play it. I won't go over anything else since the rest is all irrelevant to this tutorial's focus. That's everything I plan to discuss in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we will create a script in which we battle a wild Pokémon. This particular Pokémon will change depending on what the player's gender is. If the player is a male, a Nidoran male will appear. If the player is a female, a Nidoran female will appear. I want to talk about the idea of using overworld sprites for initiating wild battles. Not every Pokémon sprite is available for us to use. This can be extremely annoying since it takes quite a lot of work to insert your own custom overworld sprites, which is an important topic that we haven't yet gotten to in the series. Because of this, I suggest you stick to using script events when triggering wild battles, unless, of course, you have some other intricate event going on that I couldn't possibly think of off the top of my head. In addition, finding just the right track to play as background music during an event might be literally impossible given the small amount of songs we're given to work with right off the bat. In order to compensate for this, hackers will usually overwrite old tracks with new ones that they find for download on the internet. Music hacking is definitely, in my opinion, one of the least covered topics in ROM hacking, and for good reason. It can be really tough. It's not something that you can expect to get right every single time, like placing tiles on a map or executing a certain command in a script. 
Because of this, I suggest you try your best to utilize the original soundtrack or use a custom ROM base provided by music hackers on Poke Community. Some of these ROM bases will, for example, replace all of Fire Red's songs with Heart Gold songs, making everything sound more modern and engaging. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Pokey Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 19th installment of this series.